أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحج أشهر معلومات فمن فرض فيهن الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج وما تفعلوا من خير يعلمه الله وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى تقون يا أولي الألباب ليس عليكم جناح أن تبتغوا فضلا من ربكم فإذا أفضتم من عرفات فاذكروا الله عند المشعر الحرام واذكروه كما هداكم وإن كنتم من قبله لمن الضالين ثم أفيضوا من حيث أفاض الناس واستغفروا الله إن الله غفور رحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ونصلي ونسلم على خاتم النبيين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا يا كريم اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن عين لا تدمع ومن دعاء لا يسمع رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي All praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance and we seek His guidance subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of our souls and the adverse consequences of our deeds. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees guidance upon, then none can misguide him. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees misguidance upon, then none can guide him. And I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. O servants of Allah and O children of Adam, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you all, barakallahu feekum, to our third and final program in our series together. Concentrating on the Hajj. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as always, to make us a gathering that has come together solely for His sake, solely for the sake of Allah Almighty. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our coming together an act of worship. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this act of worship an accepted one, whereby for every second we spend together in this gathering, we are 
making our scales of good deeds heavier for every second. We are making our scales of good deeds heavier. And for every second that we spend here, our Jannah is becoming even more beautiful for us. For every second that we spend here because we are worshipping Allah, Allah subhanahu, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us and make every second a means of forests being planted for us in Jannah and streams being dug for us in Jannah and palaces being built for us in Jannah. Ameen. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon all able. O servants of Allah and O children of Adam, the talk today is titled Lessons from the Final Sermon or the Sermon during the Farewell Hajj. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conducted many sermons during his Hajj. During his Hajj. And these or his advices and instructions are documented in many a hadith. In many a hadith. But there was a sermon that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conducted on the day of Arafah that famously became known as the final sermon. And it was a speech that deserved to be written with gold ink. And everything that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said deserves to be written with golden ink. My dear brothers and sisters, during the 10th year after Hijrah, and in the best days of the year, the first 10 days of the Hijjah, which we are about to enter upon, if not already, or if these days have not already begun, and more specifically on the 9th of the Hijjah, which is known as the day of Arafah, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam delivered that sermon that was and will always remain a charter of universal values for eternity. And as I said earlier, we have many narrations regarding the different sermons and we also have many narrations regarding this sermon which we have called the final sermon. We have a hadith in the books that are considered to be the books of the sihah as well as a hadith in the Sunan compilations of hadith. And there's a famous hadith which you all should know, and that is the hadith of Jabir radiallahu anhu in Sahih Muslim. And this hadith describes the hajj of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from beginning till end. From beginning till end. And even in this hadith, there is mention of some of the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the final sermon. And perhaps maybe the longest mention of the sermon is found in the hadith recorded by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. I have for you a compilation of advices that I will read out and share with you all today. And then inshallah we will uh, go through these advices and deduce some lessons. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Arafah on his mount, he addressed multitudes of Sahaba. Some of the scholars say that this speech was addressed to 114,000 Sahaba. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. 114,000 people were present when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the sermon. And this is a huge contrast to the 313 that stood plus or minus that stood on the battlefield during the Battle of Badr. 114,000 have been documented to have heard this sermon. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam eloquently spoke. And at the end of the sermon, he raised his finger to the sky. And he sought witness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he conveyed the message. That he conveyed the message, the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to convey. He sought witness from Allah 
Allahumma fashhad. He sought witness from Allah that, Ya Allah, you bear witness that I have done what was upon me to do. And it was then that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an ayah, an ayah that will be read till the day of Qiyamah. And that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that today your religion has become completed for you. And the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has become completed upon you. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen Islam as your religion. As your religion. This is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored. Now, this doesn't mean that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with Islam. And that Islam is the youngest of all religions. Rather, all the messengers of Allah came with Islam. The theology of the message of all the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam was exactly the same. Was exactly the same. From the first messenger, Nuh alayhi salam. From the first messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَقَالَ فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ Allah tells us about Nuh and the message that he was sent with. And Allah says that he was sent to his nation. And he said to them, Worship one Allah. There is no other ilah and God worthy of worship besides him. And this message was the same with all the Anbiya alayhim salatu wa salam. Yes, the fiqh or the jurisprudence differed from prophet to prophet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals with divine wisdom. For certain laws, it's from Allah's wisdom that they exist at a certain time with a certain group of people. And those laws are abrogated and changed or new laws are revealed during a different time with a different group of people, right? This happens. But to prove what I am saying regarding all the messengers of Allah coming with one message or coming with Islam and coming from one source, the scholars of Usul al-Fiqh, they have an entire discussion related to the laws of the previous prophets. Do they apply to us or not? the laws of the previous prophets, do they apply to us? أَشَّرْعُ مَنْ قَبْلَنَا هَلْ هُوَ شَرْعٌ لَنَا This is what they, this is the topic of discussion. And the correct opinion and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best is that yes, the laws of the previous prophets are our laws as well. With two conditions. The first condition is that their law is mentioned in our sources. And the second condition is that our sharia has not abrogated those laws. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the sunnah tells us about a law that was given to a previous prophet, then we know that that law was given because our sources are unchanged. And if our sharia hasn't abrogated that practice, then that is evidence. That is evidence to deduce, to substantiate a law in Islam. Allahu Akbar. Thus, Islam was not a young religion. It was the only religion sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the moment that you live in. And we discussed this during our first talk when we spoke about the general implication of the term Islam and the specific implication. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. An amazing ayah, and again all the ayat in the Qur'an are amazing. 
And this ayah, the previous nations wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah to them. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. For in the hadith of Tariq ibn Shihab, he states that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an said that he was visited by a Jewish man. And this Jewish man said to him that there's an ayah in your book. Had it been revealed to us, we would have considered that day when that ayah was revealed a day of Eid. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. See how they are envious of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When it was for them to accept the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For he was the brother of their prophets. And their prophets commanded them to follow the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. So this is what they said. That had it been revealed to us, the day it was revealed, we would have considered that day a day of Eid. So this is the author of Tariq ibn Shihab. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us diligent Muslims. Wallahi. Where we are proud to live Islam. And we thank Allah for Islam. And we consider Islam the greatest thing in our life. Many a time we ask someone, what's the greatest thing in your life? And every thought comes to his or her mind besides the fact that I am Muslim. And Allah has guided me to Islam. Subhanallah. Ask the revert Muslim. Wallahi. I was just discussing with the brothers the other day about a female revert from Holland who read her first salah in the masjid. And she said to me, is the salah in the masjid correct? And I said, why? And she said, subhanallah, that I read salah to dhuhr there and the dhuhr salah only lasted around 10 minutes. Is this correct? And I said, yes, this is fine. As long as the fundamentals of the salah were observed, then this is fine. I said, why does this confuse you? She says, I don't know. Maybe I am making a mistake. Because when I observe salah to dhuhr, it lasts about one and a half hours. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. One and a half hours. Why? And she burst into tears saying, Wallahi, when I put my head on the ground, I find it impossible to raise my head from the ground that I am 60-something years old, and all these years went by when I never prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know how long I have left, so I find it difficult to get up from sujood. Subhanallah. Look, look at this appreciation of the deen. This appreciation of the deen. Another river tells me that she reads the seerah of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she she is in tears and she's crying and she's telling me that will Allah love me ever love me as he loved them? That I read the things that they did and I, I know I don't have the abilities to do what they did. Will Allah ever love me as he has loved them? Please answer this question, Allahu Akbar. How many of us read the seerah of the companions? And tear for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like this genuinely that, Ya Allah, what is wrong with us? Our hearts don't feel. This iman is not lit up as it should be. That reverts are doing practices that we should have been doing for years. What is wrong with us? Thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. What has put you in a deception of your Rabb? Who is kareem and generous? What has put you in a deception of Allah? Alladhi khalaqak. He is the one who created you. Fasawak. And he shaped you. And he straightened you. Allahu Akbar. What has put you in a deception of Allah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. Really, may Allah make us diligent Muslims. Amen.